Hey guys, and welcome back to another Arma 3 video. 2022 has been a busy year, as we've seen the launch of Arma Reforger and have been gifted with the news that Arma 4 is on its way. But that has not slowed down the modding community in the slightest. In fact, I think it's reinvigorated a lot of the creators to push the envelope of what's possible. In this video, I'm going to cover my personal picks for the top 25 mods of 2022. Of course, there are way more than 25 incredible mods that launched in 2022, but I don't have the ability to make five hour long videos, and even then I don't think I'd be able to scratch the surface. So please know that just because they're higher or lower on this list does not mean they're less or more valuable. I've been messing with a ton of mods this year, and if they made it onto this list, you know it got my pants super tight. We've seen a ton of incredible new mods this year, and it gets me excited for the future of modding as the community gets smarter and more experienced. Now with that, let's get right into the top 25 mods of 2022. At number 25 is Leg Kick by Dr. Sova. Alright, so this one is a personal favorite because it's simply hilarious. There are other mods out there that incorporate a kick feature as well, and they're amazing, but this one is just simple and straight to the point as many melee mods tend to come with a lot of new commands that eat up some of the valuable keyboard space. Yeeting an enemy 100 meters with this mod never gets fucking old, and sending them tumbling down a hill or off the top of a tower has me cackling every single time. Why is Ragdoll the best thing ever made? At number 24, we've got Fire Support Plus by Finosi Shapira Panda et al. Any mod that adds a new way to bring down rage and hate on my enemies is a banger in my book, but this mod goes a few extra miles and gives you not only new ways to blow shit up, but gives you an abundance of new methods, which really makes me happy when I'm Zeusing. You're not just limited to the standard artillery barrages either, no. You can bring the fucking heavens down on someone's head with a meteor strike, and that's just outstanding to me. This mod is meant to be used while Zeusing a mission and gives a ton of new fire support options such as napalm, entire artillery and rocket barrages so you don't have to click around a thousand times, rock slides, a fucking orbital strike, and much, much more. If you like making shit go boom and like messing with the people in your Zeus missions, go get this mod right now and start having fun. At number 23 is Libertad All-in-One. Truly one of the more beautiful island maps to make its way to the workshop this year, Isla Nueva is the sister island of Cuba and is roughly 80 kilometers squared in size. Sporting dense jungles and dangerous wildlife and gorgeous vegetations and crystal clear water, Isla Nueva should now be the gold standard for tropical islands, and you guys know I'm a slut for that pretty blue water. Utilizing a lot of Tanoan assets, this mod is essentially Tanoa light, except it lacks its multiple air bases, but that isn't the focus here. Isla Nueva is the perfect map to go hunting for guerrilla insurgents. Dropping into the jungle to clear out militia from a town is a ton of fun and really gives me Ghost Recon Wildlands vibe. At number 22, we've got Switchblade Loitering Munition by Napalm and Ollie. We've been seeing these munitions circulating more and more as the use of autonomous weapons have massively increased during the 2022 invasion of Ukraine by Russia. Found in the miscellaneous section of the arsenal, once deployed, you can use your UAV terminal to either manually select a target or let the drone pick its own based on the configuration you select. The 300 version is great for infantry and light vehicles, and the 600 is comparable to the strength of an ATGM. As the switchblade comes in from the top down, it will always hit the most vulnerable area of a tank or armored vehicle and will usually knock it out in one strike. 20 years ago, this type of weapon was only a concept, and now it's being utilized almost daily on modern battlefields. At number 21 is Exocet Inspecting Weapons by Exocet. This gorgeous mod does exactly what the name suggests. By hitting Alt-I, you will inspect your primary weapon, secondary weapon, launcher, or binocular. Right now, only those four item categories are available. There is no practical use for this other than looking awesome and making pretty thumbnails, but it's super unique and I've been spending an embarrassing amount of time holding up different weapons and seeing them from different angles. It's amazing what such a simple mod can do for your enjoyment. At number 20, we've got Project Future Vertical Lift by Watt, Alan L. Huber, and Martinez. 
This one has been around a little while, but the recent resurgence in low profile, high speed infill and exfill of Special Operations Forces has brought this mod back to the forefront. This mod is a beautiful rendition of the V280 Valor made by Bell Boeing for the US Army as a possible replacement for the aging but still very capable H60 Blackhawk. Sporting five different variants, which include a basic unarmed transport, a gunship, special forces transport, and two armed transport variants, this thing packs a serious punch, while also getting in and out of the battlefield quickly. Utilizing Arma's VTOL mechanic, the aircraft can transition from vertical flight to horizontal flight with ease, and it has incredible power compared to the V-22, which is larger, heavier, and less maneuverable. If you're wanting a new vehicle to conduct airborne special operations with, then this is your new ride. At number 19, we've got Ace, but extremely based, by SeanHub.com. Now, before you guys go launch a full-on assault in the comments, please know that I do love Ace for the awesome mechanics it provides. However, I'm not particularly partial to the advanced medical stuff as I rarely venture out on the ground and don't really have a need for it myself as it eats up valuable processing power from my CPU could otherwise be utilizing while I'm in game. This version of Ace removes the advanced medical G-forces, Ace hearing, backblast, but keeps many of the popular features like Ace Interact, advanced grenade throwing and dragging and also adds new features like grenade throwback, invisible backpacks, prone launcher and some other movement features that enhance quality of life. Now this wouldn't be the ace version for hardcore mill simmers obviously but for those that would like the capabilities ace provides without having to use the advanced medical system or hit mechanics standard ace provides then this is the mod for you. At number 18 is APU Startup by Aaron. This incredible little mod is actually something I've been wanting in Arma 3 for a long, long time and I was super surprised no one made it yet. I really enjoy the lengthy startup sequence for jet engines to include the sound of the APU starting up. It reminds me of all those fighter bases I've been at and getting to hear that sexy sound daily is something I've been missing as I've not been stationed at in a fighter base in a couple of years now. This mod comes with the ability to customize the key binding but by default you can hit B to activate the APU of an aircraft and have to wait until it's completely spun up, which takes about 5 seconds before you can turn the engines on. It's a small mod that adds a lot of enjoyment when starting up planes in Arma. At number 17 we've got Japan 2035 by JFXAM. A beautiful addition of the Japanese Defense Forces liveries into Arma 3, this is primarily a reskin of vanilla assets but the work done here is next fucking level beautiful. I've always had a bit of a hard-on for the Jazz Daft camo schemes, and this mod brings that into Arma 3 in spades. Adding his own lore into the mix grounds the mod in reality as well. The story goes, as CSAT increases hostility towards NATO, Japan decides it needs to modernize and arm itself to better align with NATO standard, and as such we see many real-world elements transported into the vanilla Arma 3 assets, and I fucking love it. Anything that adds to the lore is a win for me. At number 16 is E-22 Russian Armed Forces by Grave. Now Russia isn't the most popular country at the moment, but this mod definitely deserves some attention. Created back in 2019 before any of the current hostilities in Ukraine, E-22 is a new take on Russian forces in the Arma 3 universe. However, the twist is it does not follow the traditional Arma 3 lore and is not meant to follow the 2035 setting, though it is highly compatible with the vanilla assets. The texture work and amount of love and detail that went into this mod is amazing and truly one of the best futuristic Russian factions you can get your hands on and absolutely deserves to be downloaded in mass. At number 15 is US Coast Guard Semper Paratus by Stevio UK, Zelo, Silence, and Acres. I covered this mod very recently and man I'm still simping over how beautiful this helo is. This mod is meant to be used with the Hatchet H60 framework in order to activate some of the additional features within the Jayhawk like loading and unloading the rescue basket as well as the additional features within the aircraft at each individual seat. The mod also comes with Coast Guard uniforms and vests to add that additional fidelity and man does it look good. Highly highly recommend this one. At number 14 is No Man's Land by Mortarius Hunter. 
set during the invasion of Altus during the East Wind campaign. This mission is probably one of the best 2035 lore missions available on the workshop. Split in between three phases, No Man's Land shows the attack on the Altus airport from NATO's perspective instead of Carrie's, and I love this awesome take on the East Wind campaign, being able to see it through a new lens. A ton of effort has gone into the recreating the feel of the East Wind campaign, as well as a shitload of hand-placed assets and a fuckload of attention to detail for those players that want to squeeze every ounce of lore out of a scenario. This one is for the lore boys. At number 13, we've got F-16 Sky Guardians by XRAM. Without a doubt, some of the most gorgeous aircraft liveries to hit the workshop in recent years. XRAM has been hard at it, creating some beautiful skins for Firewheels F-16, so you know I dove into this one like a crack addict. There are so many different country skins, I could spend 20 minutes talking about all of them. But some of the standouts are a beautiful rendition of an AAF livery, as well as some modern Air Force skins like the Hellenic, Turkish, Chilean, and Belgian Air Forces, but it doesn't stop there. The reason I love them so much, aside from the gorgeous texture work, is the attention to detail with the weathering of each aircraft. Hydraulic fluid, residue, and leaks are all over these things, showcasing their wear and tear like I've never seen in another mod. To me, that is everything because I love the look of a dirty jet, and in Arma, it just adds to the immersion for me. At number 12 is Drongo's Defensive AI by Drongo. Unless you've been hiding under a rock, you know that Drongo is on a crusade to provide the most impactful AI mods available for mission makers. This mod involves the use of Lamb's Danger AI mod and completely overhauls how the AI acts defensively within a given area. To use it, you place the defensive AI module at the center of the desired area and edit the values of which there are an absolute fuck ton. Depending on your selection, when the mission starts, the AI will carry out those functions. The full breakdown and instruction on how to work the mod is on the Steam Workshop page, and if you're looking for a mod to create random, unpredictable defensive scenarios, then this is it. At number 11, we've got Better Inventory by Xanius. One of those mods we didn't know we needed, but now we can't live without it. Xanius fleshed out the inventory to where all of your containers show their contents at the same time, as well as their current fill rate, so no more guessing where things are in your inventory. I love mods that allow you to see everything you need at a glance, and this is one of those that absolutely nails it. At number 10 is Squad Ukraine by Dennis Vitamin. Created back in 2019 before the Russian invasion, this mod definitely gained plenty of recognition ever since. Bringing in the beautiful camo scheme of the Ukrainian armed forces, this is a must-have if you plan on making any current geopolitical missions set in the current conflict. Essentially reskinning many vanilla assets and creating a new faction, this allows Squad Ukraine to fit in well with the 2035 lore. I really enjoy their uniform pattern, which is really what the US Army's UCP should have been. But I'm glad it's getting some highlights by being included in Squad Ukraine. At number 9, we've got Opcom Operations Command by King of Nothing. Without a doubt, one of the best create your own experience scenarios out there. The sheer amount of effort that went into creating this is nothing short of outstanding. You're able to customize your entire experience from the amazing interface before selecting the missions you want to partake in. The kicker here is that you can launch on missions on any terrain you have loaded as long as it has three locations, which is pretty incredible. This is the liberation you've been wanting in Arma as a single player experience. This is my absolute go-to when I don't feel like creating a whole new scenario and just want to hop in to see what I get. The incredible amount of Steam awards this mod has received should tell you everything you need to know. At number 8 is Zombies and Creatures by Web Knight. Web Knight is at it again, making the world a better place for Arma 3 players. This time with his rendition and slight remake of the original Zombies and Demons mod. Using his own improved melee system, this mod introduces many new demons such as his own versions of headcrabs, smashers, bloaters, and screamers. This mod redefines terror and in the right conditions is downright terrifying. The AI has been optimized a lot better than the older zombie mod, however you should still limit the amount of enemies to about 50 to maintain a stable frame rate. It is armed. Using editor tools like the Garbage Collector can also help keep the FPS down as more and more demons spawn in. At number 7 we've got Skeet IR Thermal Weapon Sight by Hayton Caffeine and Scott Z. 
This is one of the sexier new mods for ground pounders that like shooting their enemies in the face without them knowing they're there. The Skeet IR Thermal Weapon Sight includes a beautiful Trijicon Skeet IR X miniature multi-purpose thermal optic sight. It's small enough to be clipped onto a helmet and used as a thermal observation device, but powerful enough to be attached to a weapon to provide clear thermal optics during clandestine operations. Currently, the mod utilizes Arma 3's reworked infrared architecture. However, the Arma 3 thermal improvement mod is planned to be integrated, and that is going to be next level boner fuel. At number 6 is Helmet Mounted Camera by Paradox. Dude, this mod is so damn fun. I have a blast using it when just messing around with the boys in the server or when I'm just in the mood to do some fun, non-tactical shooting but want to look cool. There's just something about this view that gives me so much joy and obviously a lot of you guys enjoy it too. So Paradox really hit this one out of the park. If he worked on a police body cam next, I'm sure that would probably be amazing, but also probably pretty impractical. Probably could be able to see shit, I don't know. At number five, we've got Simple Craters by Havoc. A game changer of a mod, Simple Craters utilizes the new terrain deformation built into the Arma 3 terrain architecture and allows you to start deforming the terrain with explosions. Now, after a town has been shelled all to shit with artillery and rocket barrages, the ground where these explosions happen will be left cratered and damaged, making many areas impassable. This adds a whole new way of thinking during an operation, especially if you're fighting the AI and you want to knock out their airbase with a couple of well-placed JDAMs. Can't use the runway if it's full of holes. The unfortunate part is that there's no way to repair it, so until the map is reloaded or the server is reset, all the holes will be there still. At number 4 is SciTech Underground Map by SciTech Dev Team. This is another one of those mods that it seemed like the entire workshop was waiting on, and when it dropped, people shit themselves. This is the creepiest, most atmospheric map I think I've ever played on. If you're claustrophobic, do not play on this map because the entire thing is underground, and unless you've got the map up, you will get lost. I don't even know how many custom assets this mod brings, but I do know the devs spent about $10,000 worth of their own money importing them in for your enjoyment. A ton of amazing missions were built and launched on the workshop, many of which are horror themed, right in time for spooky season. At number 3 we've got USS Freedom Carrier Deck SP System by Ricochet. I don't think I've seen a more creative use for the USS Freedom, and that carrier deserves some love because it's fucking gorgeous. This mod is scripted to be a living, breathing carrier deck with taxiing and catapulting aircraft, voice acted deck announcements from the air boss, as well as recovery operations. If you're the aircraft carrier type and want a fun, scripted experience, this one is perfect. I had a huge grin on my face waiting in line and listening to the ambience of the flight deck as well as watching the AI come and go. At number two is a massive surprise, but oh, welcome one at that. And that is the A10C by Lord Peril. The man himself came out of what seemed like a long hiatus to bring us a remastered version of his A10 with an interactive cockpit and working avionics system. This motherfucker has a mind-blowing 70 buttons and switches in the cockpit, a reworked damage and loadout system courtesy of the USAF mod team, an ejection sequence, GPS targeting system with precision guided munitions, the ability to customize your aircraft livery with your rank and name, and so much more. Additionally, if you want to skip the full startup sequence, which I'm not sure why you would, you have the option to do that within the add-on options. The full list of features is listed on his workshop page, as well as some custom controls so you can get up and go. The Perils A10, the Project Hatchet H60, the H64 Apache, and T3's FA18 Super Hornet mods are the complete set of interactive aircraft currently available, and I'm really hoping to add the F16 to that list in the future. And finally, at number one, is hands down one of the most game-changing aircraft mods out there, and that is the Hatchet H60 Pack, stable version by the Project Hatchet team, Yaks, A26 Mike, and Ampersand et al. Truly the most ambitious rotary winged mod available on the workshop, this is taking a full step towards DCS level of interactivity and complexity. Many of the same guys that worked on the H64 
Longbow Apache mod also worked on this mod, and it absolutely shows in its delivery. This pack comes with many variants of the venerable H60, including my personal favorite, the HH60 Golf Pavehawk that I deployed with downrange, and it will always have a special place in my heart. There is a full interactive startup procedure, as well as documentation and how-to guides already on YouTube to get you started. If you've been used to the way Arma 3's helos work, then I definitely suggest reading through the manuals as torque and engine power are factors to worry about when taking off and flying. And if you don't balance these variables, you're gonna have a bad time. My hat is off to the Project Hatchet mod team. I was absolutely floored by how much fun this aircraft is to start up and fly and how much variability this brings to the players who crave higher fidelity helicopters in Arma. Well guys, that is all I have for this year's top 25 mod list. 2022 has slapped from the beginning and shows no signs of stopping as we've still got a couple months to go. So who knows what amazing mods are coming. I might know of one, actually. As always, I want to say a huge thank you to my patrons for their unwavering support. You guys continue to bless me every month, and if I could, I'd kiss you all in the mouth. But instead, you'll have to settle with being shown here. And of course, I want to thank you, the viewer, for watching, liking, commenting, and subscribing. Let me know what mods you've loved this year, and share some in the comments for others to see. Thank you all again for your time and for watching, and I will see you in the next video.